Hello and welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel and Google Sheet needs. In today's video, I want to share with you a nutrition tracker that I created on Google Sheets. With this tracker, as the name implies, you can track your daily nutrition values that you are consuming. Calories, fat, protein, carbs, sugars, and fibers. And you can extend this list, of course, if you want vitamins and other things as well. So this is all maintained in your own Google Sheets. You can add it very easily. You can also access from your mobile phone and see. And let me walk you through how I built this step one step at a time. If you're interested in these kinds of content, please hit that subscribe button as I am uploading new content all the time. All right, how is this file built? You have a summary sheet, which we'll get to later, which shows you the current week and allows you to search a date range and see your daily averages. You have an input sheet, which we'll see how to add a food intake. You have a food input, which is your basically your database, all your dates, what you ate in the past. And you have a food database, which is where you keep the uh, nutrition information. So you have a name of a food, a food group if you want, it's not needed the calories, fat, protein, etc. Now this is built per 100 grams, which is the usual uh, way. This entire table was pulled from a site called My Food Data, which you can check and look into. Link is here. Uh, I just pulled um, some information from them in the nutrition data spreadsheet somewhere here. <coughs> I think I took yeah, that one. So that's the uh, one that I used. Uh, I used it for an Excel version. I couldn't use all the lines. They have about 14,000 lines. It was too heavy for Google Sheets. So I just limited to about 2,500 lines. And these are the foods that you can basically search and add to your uh, daily consumption. Let's see how it works here in the input sheet. So I can either select, which is going to be very hard, or I can start clicking. And you see I clicked Apple. So Gala Apples. I need to, uh, to write the portion. So this is, again, 100 grams. So let's say 100 grams. Oh, where is the formula? Sorry about that. All right, and immediately I will see the calories and everything for that item. And I also have a total here just so I can see, uh, let's say if I have syrups, maple, let's say 0.5, I don't know, something like that. So, and let's also have steak. Let's see if I have steak here, grilled T-bone steak. Let's say 3.5, sorry. And potatoes, sweet potatoes. Gotta love, gotta have me some sweet potatoes. All right, so let's say this is my intake. You can see the total over here so I can understand what's going on. Once I click the add food button, this table will be added here below. All right, and that's my food intake. Now, I just want to show you how easy it is to also add uh, lines to the food database. Let's say I want to add, and you see I'm at the end, so I'll just add another 1,000 rows. Let's say I want, uh, I'll just call it test food. And you can, you'll see over here in the input that now if I click on test food, it immediately appears. Easy as that. That's all you need to do. Add the name and the information let's say you have a a monday meal that you always generate or like a a salad your own salad or whatever you just want to instead of selecting uh cucumber lettuce and tomato you can just have a name uh, my salad and have the data over here and then you can just search for it very easily so let me show you uh, how it works i selected four items four food types You'll see in the food input for today, which is the 26th, I have uh, these items so far. Go ahead and click on add food. 
This is a app script that runs in the background. Just want to check that it didn't delete. And it should add lines over here. Those are the lines that we just saw together. Very easy, very simple. Now, the input, the add food, add food uh, part is, let's say, the tricky part of this entire sheet. Uh, if you don't, if you don't want to do it, you can just take these lines, copy, paste, right by values, and then add the date over here, and that basically mimics the, the process here. This is a table. There's nothing here, just data. Okay, so that's the input. Uh, this is a drop down. Very simple to do. Data. Data validation, um, add rule just for this one. Select drop down from range, click this, then go over here, highlight A2, and keep A without a number. That's going to give you the last row that's available. And because this is a very big database for Google Sheets, it takes a while for it to compile the list. But once it does, you're good to go. Okay, now I don't need this, so I'm just gonna delete it. Um, click on X, all right. So that's how you build this. Um, the portions is a number. Now, all of these are simple index matches, all right? So index match, if you're not familiar, it's a combination of a row and a column, which I like to use because it's dynamic. I could have used VLOOKUP, and then I'd have to understand uh, how many columns I'm going through, but I just build it once with index match, and then I just have to copy the formula. So let's see how it works. So index, the first part is where you're working on. So A1 through H of the food database. So basically it's this entire table. Then match. Match will return a number. That is going to be the row number. So I'm looking for A3. That's the food. Match A3 in the column A. That's going to give me the location of the food. Let's say this one or this one or this one. Then I need the column. Am I in calories, fat, or protein? So that's the second match. It's going to look for the, the header, which is over here, the calories. And you'll notice that this is on the A1 through H1. So it's basically here. So that's how you built that. And the last part is the zero, which means it's an exact match, which you must have. You'll notice I'm multiplying by B3, which is the number of portions. And if there's nothing, the if error helps me if I don't have any food selected. So I just want to be visually uh, appealing and also uh, not to mess up my calculations here. I don't have the if error, it's just going to show an A and then it messes up everything. So that's the input sheet. Let's jump to the summary sheet and in the end we'll look into how to create this button. Summary sheet, we have the current week. You set up the daily targets. This is manual. The, the, the uh, peach colored are manual. And it's going to show you the current week from Monday through Sunday, no matter what day you are. What is the uh, consumption of calories for each day. Of course, this is showing the future because this is just uh, dummy data. It's going to show you the daily average, okay? And it's going to show you in red every time you're above your target. So if I now increase my target, you'll see uh, I'm okay. If I take this down, then I'm not okay over here. So that gives you the ability to understand how you're operating. How, how is this built? This is a number, the daily average. You can see I have an if error, average if. Average if D4 through J4 is greater than zero, then. Basically, I don't want to average uh, anything that's not above zero because maybe I don't have any input for the certain date. Or I'm only on a Monday, so these are all empty. That's why I have that formula. If error zero, again, just to not mess up my calculations. Then I have a sum ifs, and this is all the same. The only difference between the rows is the first part. You see this. So sum ifs, I'm going to sum the values in column D of my food input, so column calories, based on the date. 
So the date is column A, so the date has to be greater or equal to D3, which is the date, okay? And it has to be less than the day after. Notice it doesn't have an equal, so it has to be just one day. Drag that out all the way, and you get the same without all the dollar signs, so it doesn't change. And just copy the formula, change the starting column, go from D, E, F, G, H, I. Each time it's going to summarize a different column. Um, I didn't cover how I, how I generated the dates. So to generate the Monday of the week is this formula today minus weekday today two plus one. That's going to give you the Monday of the week, whatever date you are in. This is text return DDD. That's going to return the name of the of the uh, date. So if I now have uh, Friday, okay, you saw that. And these are just plus one stretch it out all the way for a week so you have a full week to see you can build it however you see fit you can add another week you can see just the day whatever whatever is good for you so that's how this is built and the conditional formatting very simple custom formula if b4 is greater than why is it showing b4 but anyway uh if it's greater than this then painted red very simple to do the second summary part is a date range let's say you want something more dynamic show me august so you you select these two that's going to show you how many days um in august you had input over here because let's say you had one day of input or 15 in my case so you don't want to average 30 days because that's going to give you a very good result so well, in a second, I'll show you how to calculate this one. The daily target, that will be equal to here. So it's the same daily target, so you don't have to do it twice. If you want something else, you can, of course, always manually change this. And the daily average is a sum ifs that we saw before. It's exactly the same. Only difference is here, I use the same date for both, uh, you know, before and after. And this here, I have two dates. So A13 and B13. And I'm dividing by the dates, the number of days here. How did I calculate the number of days? So you, have, you see there's three functions here. Count, unique, filter. Starting off with filter. Filter will return a range in the food input, all right? So I'm gonna filter this column for cases where the dates are greater, equal, or less equal than this, okay? So that's going to give me basically imagine, or you know what, let's not imagine, just show you what happens. So it gives me all of those ranges. Now, obviously, I don't want to count uh, the 18th as six rows. I want to count it as one. So I add the unique. If you add the unique function, that's like removing duplicates. Now I just have one value for the 18th. And on top of that, I want to add a count because I want the number. I don't care about the actual dates. So the count will return a number, like you see here, 15 dates. So that gives me a good average compared to what I really inputted. If you don't have that and you just calculate the difference between these two dates, that would be 30 or 31, and that would be a very wrong assumption. So that's how I built the summary, uh, which is where you should be um, sometimes, I guess. This is where you can see it on your mobile phone. Uh, the input sheet won't work within mobile. The, the plus button, the app script doesn't work. It uh, doesn't even show it, the button on your mobile, so you won't be able to use that. You can always go over here and manually add uh, your inputs, it's not very user friendly. So use the desktop version. Um, I think it's good enough. Let's take a look at how I created uh, the uh, app script to update the food input. You can just create a drawing for the button using insert drawing. 
and I created the icon in Canva. So clicking on image, I used um, something and just browsed over here and you see I have it over here. And that just creates an image. I don't have anything there. And then you click here and click on assign script and assign the script that I have. Uh, where's the script? Go to extension, app script. This is a nutrition tracker. This is the function copy range to foot input. Um, so basically you have a declaration of a spreadsheet and the two sheets based on their name. I need the last row. This is how you do it. Then I want to see, I want to copy basically that range. Okay, from A3. So this is this is this basically. And it's based on the last row that I have information. Get those values. Today's date. Filter rows. Well, column B has data. So that's how I'm going to filter the rows that don't have anything here because I don't want blank rows. Then I'm going to find the next free row in the food input sheet. Okay. Prepare data to include today's date. You can see everything. And copy the data to the next free row. This is the functions. And at the end, I'm going to clear the contents of column A and B. So I have a new Sorry, I track that. So I have a fresh start for the next input. All right, so food database, you can add rows. Food input saves your previous inputs. Input, you add your intakes. And summary, track your daily progress. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and read, write a comment. I'm always happy to reply. Have a good day.